Hi, this is Mr. Mix with Sankofa Mathematics. Today I am doing graphs of quadratic functions. So we are going to have a look at parabolas and I am going to do a few and what I have done here is you will see that most of the the work I did it on a free hand on a graph paper so that you can see exactly what it is that you need to do and then I included one examination style question towards the end so let me just go directly into it so here I've got a question they are saying that the variables x and y are connected by the equation y equals to x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then there is a missing value of q here that you are supposed to complete. Now, the way you do this is you take this value of x and you substitute it into the function. And once you substitute it in the function, that's going to give you the output value of y. And we now here know that y is equal to 10. So what we have here is a table of values which are essentially also coordinate points that can be plotted on a table and ones that can be plotted on a, on a graph. And once you plot them on the graph and you join them, you should be able to get a smooth curve and you should not join them using a straight line or a ruler. Right, so we're going to follow this particular scale here. So on the y-axis as well as the x-axis, one unit will be represented, represented by one centimeter. All right, and we're going to look at values of x between negative 5 and 2. So what that means is simply that when you do your Cartesian coordinate system, you should know that we expect values of x from negative 5 here and up to 2. So I always say to people, go one out, maybe negative 6 and 3 here. But here's the problem. How high should or how low should your graph be? And that is where you get to your table. And you will see that the highest value is going to be the when y is positive. So essentially, your graph is going to take more or less that shape there. All right, because you can see there's no negative value of y, so there's nothing that we can deal with here. So let this be an indicator as well as the output as to when you are plotting or when you start with your graph. All right, so I have done it here, and I've also brought back the table so you can see uh, from my previous table that I had and I completed it. So every point on that particular graph is listed and you can see that as far as when x is negative 4 for example y is 10 and the point is here negative 4 comma 10 and what we're saying is the distance here is one centimeter there's five little squares in there and it's the same distance so I'm following what the scale is requiring and don't forget to label your axis and you plot all the points because you get marks for plotting all the points and then you label your function you can do this afterwards because there could be questions that you are supposed to complete where you maybe need to uh, find intercepts and things like that right so they are saying you are supposed to use your graph to find the y value when x is equal to 1.3. So that is going to be a value here. So let's find when x is 1.3. So you take your, your ruler and then you find when x is equal to 1.3. And this is an estimate. And you will see that I get, for example, something close to 6.2. Remember, one little small square represents 0 0.2. And how do you get 0 0.2? You take 5 or 1 divided by 5. That is 0 0.2. So yeah, each small block like 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, then 1, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, then 2, and so on. So I'm getting a value here when y, when x is about 1.3, which is here between 0 or 1.2 and 1.4 rather, then I get a value here. So your answer should not be too far off from what we have. It's an estimation because it all depends on your curve and how smooth it is. Right, let me bring the curve back as well as the table.
So the next question you're supposed to do is you're supposed to find the value of x now when y is equal to 3. And y equals to 3 is, in, is a line. So I will say draw that line with your pencil, all right? And where the line intersect with the curve, you read down the x values, for example. So in this particular case, one answer here is x is negative 2.4. And here's another point where they intersect, and then you read off from the x value, and then the, and the x value here is 0 0.4. These are the two values that are required when y is equal to 3. So that is how you approach that question, is where your line is intersecting with the curve, and it intersects at two places, and you give the x values there. Right. So we are going to use the graph. So let me bring it back again. And we are going to find the coordinates of the minimum point. Now, let me just explain. You have a parabola that is opening up like this. And sometimes parabola can also close down like that, especially when the value of A is negative. And you will see one example like that. So the minimum point is this particular point here is the lowest point of the graph. And this particular function, its lowest point, you can actually see it is here. So to write the coordinates down, you will realize that it is just negative 1, comma 1. And that is what we refer to as the minimum. So a graph has a minimum if it opens up. Okay? So if it closes down, it will have a maximum value. So this is the lowest y value, the lowest point of the graph, whatever x is and whatever y is. Now, they are now asking you essentially to find the equation of the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is a line that cuts this graph in half. And you can actually see at this particular point here, because at this particular point, you are going to have a line that cuts it exactly in half, because the axis of symmetry or the line of symmetry is cutting the parabola as exactly in half. So that is the line that we are referring to, and you always have to remember that these lines are x equal to some number, in this case, x equals to negative 1. Right, then question 2 is a similar type of question. Again, they are giving you some variables, and then there is a missing value here. So what you do is you do the same to find that value of B. You take when x is 3 and you substitute it into the equation everywhere where you have an x and that output is going to give you the value of b, like what I did for example, and I indicated in red. So the 3 plus 2x minus x squared, I just took out the x's and placed them with the 3 and you see it's very important because if that x was negative, then you put that whole negative in the brackets. Well, we realize the value of b is 0. So all these points can now be plotted on a graph and you should be able to get a parabola and this parabola you will see it will close down because it has a minus in front and also what you need to understand the minus is in front of the leading term all right what you need to understand is you can actually rewrite this in standard form for quadratic functions so it's always minus x square plus 2x all right, then the 3 is positive. So that is one of the things you can do before maybe you do something. So you don't get confused, all right? And because of this minus that you have here, we know now that our graph, if we were to plot it, our graph is going to have a shape that closes down, okay? So I expect the graph to somehow be something like that because our value here of A is a value that is less than zero. So the moment this value is negative, then your graph, your parabola, if you draw it, it's going to look like this. And also what you need to remember is that the value of A can never equal to zero because if the value of A is equal to zero, then you're not dealing with parabola anymore if you plug it in here, okay? So when I talk about the A, I'm referring nothing but the way we write parabolas or quadratic functions in the standard form. It, the general format is ax squared, okay, plus bx plus c. 
all right? And the A I'm referring to is this coefficient in front of the leading uh, term, all right? That negative one here. And when it's negative, when it's less than zero, the graph, if you will draw it, will take this shape. Our previous example, you saw that the graph was taking a shape that opened up a bit. And it was because our value of A there was greater than zero. Okay? So suppose you have a value that is positive in front of the x squared term or the square term. Then you're going to expect your graph to look something like that. Right, so they are also going to then do the same. They're going to ask us to also use a scale and then to, to, to draw, plot it on a scale. So they are asking us here on a sheet of graph paper. Now, you're supposed to use one centimeter on both of the x's, on the y-axis as well as on the x-axis. So it's very similar to the one we had. And now we're going to have the values here of x between negative 2 and 4. That is the domain. Now, what you need to remember here, you always have to look at your highest or your lowest point. Now, I see that negative 5 is the lowest point, and I see that 4 for the values of y is the highest point. So it therefore will make sense that you have a graph that can have everything in there. So remember, they want it from negative 2. So I would say start at negative 3, and then they want it all the way up to 4. So end up here at positive 5, rather. Okay? And then the values of y, then the values of y, obviously, you see that the lowest one here I have is negative 5. So perhaps you can go all the way up to negative 6. That means you're going to put the other one in there. And the highest value of y is 4, so perhaps you can go all the way up to 5. Always better if you go 1 out. And now your graph essentially can fit in that particular area there. And remember what I said, I expect a graph that is going to be something like that because of that negative that I was referring to. And also what you need to remember is that your graph, where it cuts the, where it cuts the y-axis, all right, the y-intercept, it is always represented by this value of C. So I expect this value here to be positive, all right? So that tells me where the graph is going to cut the y-axis. So there's a few things you can just get from just looking at your particular uh, graph or your function. You can actually already sketch it somehow. So you just use the table in order for you to do it according to scale so you're not out. Right, so I've done it here, and uh, you will realize that in this particular case, they wanted us to use a different scale. The scale was that for the values of x, you were supposed to use um, something like a one unit must it present, or one unit is dependent by, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. It's one centimeter. It's just the way I stretched it rather for you to be able to see it. Okay, so uh, this is going to be exactly the same distance as that. It's just that I stretched it a bit. Right, so this is how that particular graph will be when you do it. And remember what I said, it's cutting the y-axis at positive 3. And you can see I brought my table back here as well. So I'm going to put questions over it. So they are asking me to find y when x is negative 1.9. So you go to your graph and you look where x is negative 1.9. So that's negative 1 here. Negative 1.9 is very close to negative 2. So perhaps if I bring an arrow there, you will perhaps see what I mean. And you will use that with your ruler and your pencil. And now you read the y value because we are looking for the y value. So it's about negative 4, 2. That is what you should get more or less in that region. Okay, that is how that particular question is asked. So you will have to draw yourselves maybe around this that goes down and across, and then you can actually find what is that value when x is equal to some value in this instance, negative 1.9. Now, here they are asking again for us to find x now. So it's similar to the one we had before. So we're going to draw the line y equals to negative 2. And this is the line y equals to negative 2. And if you remember from what I did previously, in order to find the values of x, it's where the line y equals to negative 2, where it intersects with our function. Okay? And we read of those values. All right? So here I get negative 1.5, for example. And that will be one solution. But the line cuts the graph in two places. So there's another solution, which is 
positive 3.5. So these are the two expected solution for this particular question. Right, so let me bring that graph back again. Now they are asking us here, and it's very different from what we had before. Remember before, they asked us the minimum, but this graph has a maximum point, okay, because of the nature of the graph. So we are just looking for the coordinates there, and you can easily see the coordinates there. It has to be one, comma four and that is the coordinate of the maximum point sometimes they just want you to find the x coordinate and then you give the x coordinate sometimes they want to find the y coordinate okay and then you just give the y coordinate all right so the maximum value of y for example so if the question is asking what is the maximum value of y then you just say y equals to four that is the maximum value when they ask you the maximum value of x for example it's going to be one in that particular uh, way is that particular point that we are referring to so just make sure that you get you don't mix it up it has a maximum when it closes down like this right so then they are asking us similar to find the equation of the line of symmetry you can actually see it has to be here all right because this is a nice line that cuts this parabola in half so the equation of the line of symmetry is x equals to 1, all right, which is also the same coordinate point for the highest point of the graph there, or the turning point, and that is something that you will learn a bit later when we talk about the turning point of the function. Right, so I'm bringing in a third question again. So they are asking us here to complete the table of values. So they are missing values here for A, B, and C. So again, the way you do it is you take your value of A when it's negative 3, you mean, the value of X when it's negative 3, and you punch it in there, and then you're going to get what the answer for A is. You do the same for B. You use the formula, and when X is 0, what do you get? Yes, you also get A as an answer. And lastly, you look when x is equal to 1, and then you punch 1 in, and then you realize that the values of c is equal to 4. So I expect this again to be a parabola that also takes that shape because of the nature of this minus x squared, minus 1 there. All right? And I also expect the graph to cut the y-axis at 8, for example. Right, so now they are telling us here, and you have to be a bit careful when you do this, because I gave this question to my grade 11s, and uh, you realize that here they are asking you to use a different scale. In the x-axis, you are going to use one unit will be represented by two centimeters. And the y-axis, one unit is represented by one centimeter. And we are going to have a graph between negative five and two for the domain or the x values. So essentially what that means is, again, it means that, again, remember what I said, try to go out, one out, okay, and here, perhaps three. And now here's the thing, what is the highest value that you can get? You realize if you go to your graph, or to your table rather, the highest value will be 10. So therefore, it will make sense then, if you can go all the way up to 11, for example, when you do your plotting, okay, and then you go down 10 like this, all right, and you must make sure that your scale, your scale for your y-axis, all right, your scale, the distance that you're going to use between here, for example, that one unit, so if this is 10, all right, so this one unit here, the distance should be one centimeter, all right, but the distance on between let's say that's one, let's say that's two. The distance between what you have in the x, the distance here, for example, this is going to be two centimeter, all right? Or when you use the graph paper, it will be 10 little squares like that. And here you'll find five little squares, for example, that will represent the one centimeter. So make sure that you follow the right scale, that you do not make a mistake because your graph is not going to look exactly the same. All right, so I have done it here, and you can see that uh, I talked about the scale is different here. So one unit 
is represented by 10 little squares here, which is actually equal to 2 centimeters. If you have this type of graph paper and you measure your ruler between, let's say, 0 and 1, you realize that it's 2 centimeters. And when you look here, when you have 5 little squares, that is 1 centimeter. All right, so I brought my table, I've completed the stuff, so I have got negative 5, comma, negative 2, and I plot it down, and I have negative 4, comma, 4, negative 4, comma, 4, I plot it down, and negative 3, comma, 8, and so on. So I plotted all the points as I indicated here in the blue pen here, and then I will draw myself a smooth curve. And then they ask us later to draw a straight line, and that is what you realize I did here. I just made a table, all right? But we're going to get to that question. So here they are asking us now, and this is one of the questions that learners always tend to answer wrongly. You are not supposed to use algebra, okay? The question actually says, use your graph to find the value of x when 8 minus 3x squared minus x squared is equal to 0. This 0 is important. Where will this function be 0? Yeah, if you know, it is when the function cuts the x-axis, all right? Why? Because the x-axis, the equation of the x-axis, if you know, the equation of the x-axis is y equals to 0. That is the equation of the x-axis, all right? So remember, that is what is represented by that. So the next one here, so when you do this, you realize you get something like negative 4, 7, which should be more or less what you get. And there's another place where it passes here on the x-axis, all right, as I can indicate there. And I find it to be 1.7. Those are the two solutions. So when they say equal to zero, you have to look where your function, if it does, where it crosses the x-axis, if it's equal to zero. Something also worth mentioning, sometimes they say equals to five. Okay, they could give you another number here, like a five. And when they do that, then you simply draw yourselves a straight line, all right? Why, if they give you a line here, they say um, eight minus three x minus x squared equals to five, then you take your ruler and you draw yourselves the line y equals to five, and then you read down where the x values are when that line crosses the function. But when they say equals to zero, then it has to be where the graph cuts the x-axis. Right, so now here they're asking the greatest value of y equals to 8 minus 3x minus x squared. Essentially, the greatest value of y, that means it's the highest value, all right, because the graph is going to uh, close down like this. So this particular point, somewhere here, that will be the highest value, and read that y value there. So you use your graph, and when you read that y value, you're supposed to get something like 10.2, and that is the highest or the greatest value of y for this particular graph. That is why you can't just stop at 10 when you do your table. That's why I always say go out at least one up so that you can fit everything in the graph. Okay, so I'm going to bring back this graph again. Now they're asking us to complete this table. So I have done it, all right? And this is going to be a straight line graph. I hope you still remember the gradient is negative. Hence, you can see the line goes like that. And I have also plotted all the points. A point negative 3, comma 11, I plotted it. This is the point 0, comma 5. It's the point that you get from the table. And this is the point 2, comma 1, and it's also from the table. And then you take your ruler and you draw the line. Do not stop where they meet, but go out so that you can cover everything. Now, when they are asking you to the graph, the two graphs, it is the parabola, as well as the straight line. They intersect at two points, and you can see they intersect here, and I can indicate that with an A, and they intersect here, I will indicate that with a B, okay? So we label them like that. So we just put the labels next to it. Now they are saying, write down the coordinates of the two points where the two graphs actually meet. So we have to find what is the X value, and we have to find what is the y value, all right? So I have done it. I get x to be negative 2.3, and I also have y to be about 9.6 for this particular point here. The point B, the graphs, they intersect at 1.3, comma, 2.4. That's what I get there, okay? So your graph should not be out by too much. Otherwise, your answers will not make sense.
So the next question that you're going to ask you, they will ask you to find the midpoint of these lines. And in order to find the midpoint of line AB, okay, you have to find the midpoint somewhere. You have to use the coordinates that you are given, okay? So sometimes you're lucky you can see it, but you can't count diagonally like that. You have to do something to the coordinates. And I will indicate to you what I did. So let me bring my points back, okay? Now they ask me to find the midpoint of line AB. So what you do is you take the two X values, okay? And you add them together. Remember that? So I take this X value here and I take this x value here, and I added them together, and I find half of that, okay? And then I also take the y values together, so the y value, which is 9.6 and 2.4, and I added them, and I take, and I divide by 2. That should give me the point where the line intersect, and you'll realize it is this particular point here, all right? And the point you label it point M. So when you want to find the midpoint, and this is something you're going to learn a lot in when you do coordinate geometry, that if you find the midpoint of a line, you will take the two X values, you add them together, and you divide by two, and you do the same for the two Y values, and you divide by two. Right, this brings me to an examination type question that you can have a look at. So we have a question here, y equals to 6 plus x minus x squared. That minus already tells me that if you will have to go and draw this particular graph, it's definitely going to be something that is going to close down like that. All right. So what they're asking us to do is they're asking us to find the values of P and Q and R. Okay. No matter they are repeating here, you still will get the same output. Okay. So what you do is you take your formula and you plug in, for example, I chose when P was uh, the value of X is negative three. I put negative three for X into the equation and I get that P will be negative 6. Now, I could easily have also picked that 4. I will still get the same answer of negative 6. Then I do the same thing when I was doing Q. I pick when X is negative 1, and I plug in negative 1 into my formula. I realize I get Q that equals to 4. All right? I could also have decided to use 2 positive here. I will also get the same output. Then the last one, for R, when X is 1, I get an output of 6. And this is how you solve this particular question, all right? The value of P is negative 6, the value of Q is 4, and the value of R is 6. Right, so I am going to bring that table back because we are supposed to plot this particular diagram. We are supposed to draw it, okay? So this point here. All right. These are Cartesian coordinate points that I'm going to plot on my grid and then I'm going to draw the graph. OK, so for example, the point negative three comma negative six is going to be this point right here under the point negative two comma zero is going to be exactly that point as you can see. The point negative one comma four is going to be all the way up there. The point zero comma six is on the y axis. The point one comma six you can see where it is. Then the point 2,4 followed by 3,0 and lastly 4,6. You must plot all of the points because the more points you plot, the smoother it is for you to draw your curve. And when you draw your curve here, do not draw a line here between these two. You have to go out, but remember it's a parabola. Okay, and it will have a maximum. Right, so that is what I did, and there is the line or the curve. You do not use a ruler to join these points. You have to do it with your free hand, and you must make sure that you turn your paper so that you can use the inside of your palm so you can draw smooth curves like that. Now, they want us to draw on the same grid we're supposed to draw this particular equation. And this is a straight line equation with a negative gradient. So I expect a line that will go in this direction from top left to bottom right, for example, or downhill. Now, what I do is I've decided let me use a few points from my table. I use negative 3 and I use positive 3 and 4. Remember, you only need two points 
to draw a straight line. So I realize if I decide that x is negative 3 and I plug it in here for x, okay, that means you, for example, say, well, to find my y value, you say y equals to negative, and then you plug, all right, and that is very important. What do you plug? You then you decide, okay, now here I have negative 3, for example, then you will end up with 1 as an answer. And then what you do, uh, you then remove that particular value, you go back on your calculator, and you simply replace it with the next value that is required, all right? So when you replace it, for example, with positive 3, okay, then you should get negative 5 as an answer on your calculator. And when you replace it, for example, now with a 4 positive, when you place it with a 4 positive here, then you should get negative 6 as an answer. And that is what you do in order for you to find those particular points. And what you can do from this point onwards is you can now actually draw the line or plot the points and draw. So I'm going to plot the point negative 3, 1, okay, which is up there. Then I'm going to draw the point or plot the point 3, negative 5, that is 3, negative 5, all the way down here. Okay, and the point negative or four comma negative six rather, you realize it is exactly also sharing the same point, like our parabola did. And now, now that I have the points, I just need two, but then I had to bring in the third one, so I don't end here. When you draw the line, you have to go straight out so that you can see where your graphs will intersect if they do. And as you can see, these two functions they meet definitely. And now they are asking you to write down the coordinates of the two points of intersection. That means this particular coordinate here, as well as this particular coordinate here. And you can see that this one is negative 2, 0. And this particular one here is 4, negative 6. And in a nutshell, that is how you treat this type of questions in the exam. You follow the steps. You should not be able to make mistakes. Be very careful when you uh, draw your curve or your graph. It must be a freehand drawing. And the more points you have, the smoother your curve. In the examination, they like to mark and give you all marks for when you plot correct number of points and also when you plot them all. You start losing marks when you don't plot the more points that you need to do. So make sure that you plot all the points from your table and then your curve can be smooth and you can answer any question. Right, so that brings me to the end of this particular uh, presentation. I hope that it somehow help you now to work with your questions that you had with quadratic functions. All right, when you join my Google Classroom, this is the particular codes that you have for grade 11 and grade 12, where I have more work that you can download and print out and work also on your own. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, and share.